and welcome back to this course on digital systems. The last couple of weeks, we looked at the idea of synchronous circuits, right? We looked at the idea of a single clock which is driving every single flip-flop in our system and we also saw the fact that the clock speed, right, is determined by the slowest step in the pipeline and all that, right? So today we are going to look at an alternate style of design. Uh, it's something you should be aware of, but you don't have to uh, know how to do the design in this style at this point, but you must be aware of it because it is very necessary. And today I'm going to motivate why the other style of design is necessary. So like I said, we had looked at synchronous sequential circuit design and not surprisingly, the other style of design is called asynchronous sequential circuit design, okay? So to motivate this, let's start with an example. Okay, let us say that we need, uh, we have some application where we want two clocks which are completely non-overlapping. That is when the clock phi 1 goes high, phi 2 should definitely be low, okay? And when phi 2 goes high, phi 1 must be low, okay? So you don't want uh, any possible, uh, you know, even iota of overlap in this process. So how should the clocks look? So let's draw it like this, for example. Okay, I'm going to draw it slightly exaggerated. Right, so. You know, I'm going to draw it like this. And so on. So the idea is when phi 1 falls, there is a sufficient gap between phi 1 falling and phi 2 rising. So remember in reality, I'm drawing these as very sharp edges. In reality, this will fall off like this and this will actually rise like this. Okay, so the reason you need this guard band is even in this period here, you don't want an overlap that is phi 1 being slightly on and phi 2 being slightly off or vice versa. Right, that's the reason you want to be really careful about this and then you want to ensure that there is a significant non-overlap period. <clears throat> okay, you want a significant non-overlap period which is a big guard band that ensures that phi 1 and phi 2 can never ever go high together. Okay, this is the requirement that we have and we are going to see how we can design such a uh, system in both styles of logic. So we will start with the synchronous logic, okay? This is something we already know, right? So if we look at, you know, this phi 1 and phi 2, uh, what I'll do is I'm going to start with a clock, okay? like. This is my synchronous logic clock. Okay, I'll draw a couple of cycles. Okay, this is my sampling edge as usual. And I am now going to decide how my phi 1 and phi 2 should look. Okay, so I will draw this extend this nicely okay so what i can do is the following right i can do the make phi 1 go high here right then it goes low right and then again it goes high here goes low and like this, right? On the other hand, now 
my question is where should phi 2 be okay suppose i say phi 2 where here can phi 2 be here right clearly as i told you you want a sufficiently large non overlap guard band okay to ensure that the two clocks can never go high in spite of the realistic things where the clock rises like this and so on so therefore this is not going to be possible okay this is just not possible the only way you can do this is to allow an other complete clock period to go uh, as the clock zero then you go again to the next this thing and then continue like this okay and then the same thing will continue here Right, and this is how the clocks phi 1 and phi 2 are going to look like. Okay, now given this, it's we know it's already possible to design a sequential uh, circuit which can give you these two outputs. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to now do the following I'm going to have my flip flops here. Again, I will simply de uh, deal with D flip flops. Okay, I'm going to say here's my combinational block, uh, the next state logic C1. Okay, next state logic. Okay, I'm going to feed it like this, and then I'm going to do something else here where this is the output, uh, output logic. And uh, so this is what we had called C2, right? So from this, you will get phi1 and phi2, okay? This is my clock. So I am assuming there is no uh, input to this system. Normally, what I would do is I would keep an enable here, okay? The enable would also come, uh, you know, allow this clock to go in in many uh, different phases and all that and only if enable is high i will allow this state machine to actually progress and go into various states otherwise i will not worry about it but for the sake of this discussion i'll just assume that that enable is always one and therefore i'm going to remove that from the picture right so now what am i going to do so i'm going to simply uh, you know if i look at this clock right i am looking at four states if i look at my state right i am looking at four different states here that my sequential circuit is going through okay and that is simply 0 0 0 1 1 0 and then 1 1 right and then you are back to 0 0 and so on right so this is what we are going to do and we are going to simply look at how to generate phi 1 and phi 2 based on this sequential logic so you have a state 0 0 where you want the output okay so i am going to draw two state diagrams one for phi 1 other for phi 2 when it is 0 0 you want it to be output to be 1 okay so you look at this here when it is 0 0 phi 1 is 1 it is 0 in all other three states okay so this is 0 1 output is 0 right uh, Okay, uh, 1, 0, again output is 0, 1, 1 and output is 0, right? And then you are back to 0, 0 where the output goes high, right? This is for phi 1. For phi 2, it's a very similar thing, slightly rotated. For 0, 0, it's 0. Then you come to...
0 1 ok the output again here is 0 so then 1 0 the output is 1 here ok and then I am back to 1 1 where the output is 0 and then you are back to 0 0 here ok. So, phi 1 and phi 2 have the following state machines right. So, it is very evident that you know if we just go ahead and look at the present state you know we can just go through the present state ok and next state ok and then phi 1 and phi 2 ok. So, you have 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 next state is going to be um, 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 0 right and then you have phi 1 and phi 2 where you want this to be 1 0 0 0 0 0 1 and 0 right. So, this is exactly what we have here and then if we already know how to go ahead and design this particular uh, you know state table. So, if you look at this I have uh, essentially two flip flop outputs ok. Uh, so, I will have uh, so, if I look at this, these are all 2 bits, ok. So, what I will do is, I will just come here and then draw these, ok, my clock, again my clock, Right, so I have two outputs here, uh, which I will call as y0, y1, and then I am going to call this as d0 and t1. Right. So if I look at this, uh, what I have here is my y0, y1. Sorry, y1, y0. This is d1, d0. Okay. So, this is very straightforward in order to get d0, I just look at this, uh, you know, I just look at the function that will allow me to obtain d0, right. So, you just look at this, it essentially is going to be the inversion of d0, right. So, therefore, that is very straightforward, y0 equal to d0 bar, okay. Then I have d1 which is obviously a very straightforward expression, uh, sorry d, no I am sorry this is d0 equal to y0 bar and d1 equal to y0 x or y1, ok. Now what about my phi1 and phi2, phi1 is simply if you look at this, this is a NOR gate right uh, when both are 0 the output is 1 otherwise it is so phi 1 is y1 y0 plus y1 whole bar or I can say y0 bar y1 bar right phi 2 is basically going to be uh, y1 y0 bar ok. So, effectively we have been able to get all the uh, boolean functions that we wanted from this state table and uh, we can go ahead and implement this particular function now ok. So, I will just draw the inverter here and this is just an XOR gate.
okay and you get y0 y1 here right so this xor and the inverter takes care of the next state generation for you okay and now what i do i go ahead and put my nor gate here okay and i will get phi 1 phi 1 here and i will get phi 2 out here which is going to be uh, simply y1 times y0 bar okay so um, i will just take this Okay, so our output in next state logic C1 is basically this guy. Okay, and our output logic C2 is essentially this guy here. Right, 